guys, this is Comic You Know, and today I'm doing a review for Spider-Gwen issue 23. And before I start talking about this issue, just want to give you guys a couple updates. Of course I have Comic You Know episode, and that show will review all the comics I read this week in one show, and the exclusive comics for that show will be in the description below, and the episode will be posted in the description. But let's start talking about Spider-Gwen issue 23. Now this issue I was really looking forward to because it's focusing on the Mary Janes. Now uh, you know originally when I saw the solicits I thought it was just going to be a regular Spider-Gwen issue and then a Mary Jane backup but we actually get a full-on Mary Jane issue. So let's see what's going on here. Um, gorgeous cover. I love the the red coloring. Um, and then you kind of have the bluish pinkish coloring. I really like the colors here and then Spider-Gwen in the background, and you have this kind of cartoonier look for the book that is also consistent with the interior. So, uh, again, we get this kind of simple artwork, cartoonier work, and honestly it kind of reminds me of like the style of Daria, Daria or an MTV show, like the old 90s MTV shows, which works because in the beginning of this issue we, ha we do have Robbie Rodriguez's artwork of the Watcher watching TV, and he's like... The world of Spider-Gwen has become so dark, I want something light, and then it turns into the Mary Jane show, and uh, that's why we kind of have the simple arch, um, nice, just uh, bright background colors, but plain. It works. I like these plain, bright background color uh, colors throughout the book. Now, moving on to the story. So with this issue, like I said, the Watcher is tired of Gwen being dark and he and he wants to have a lighter version of a story so it's very meta obviously of how much the the book has turned uh with Gwenum coming up so now we're focusing on mary jane now mary jane opens up with of course thinking that gwen is spider woman and everyone thinking that she's crazy uh and glory she wants to quit the band because she thinks uh, mary jane is selfish which she is and i love the line where he's like yeah you're selfish you literally called our band the mary janes you called called it after yourself. You named it after yourself. So Mary Jane's kind of proving herself not to be selfish, but along the way you can see how people's lives have been influenced because of Mary Jane's selfishness. Of course, Glory is a big example, but then you have um, Liz Allen who shows up in the issue where MJ almost stole her, uh, her boyfriend and that's why they're not friends anymore. Uh, so you get to see all these little things of how Mary Jane is affecting these people's lives and it's always about her and she's the center of the world. But in the end, and in, in throughout the issue, Mary Jane kind of learns how to be a team player. Uh, of course, especially with Glory saying, hey, you're an awesome drummer, I need you. And, you know, showing that she values the friendship. And then even with Betty, we get to see that there's this guy trying to target her. And Mary Jane, because she took one class and because it's Mary Jane, is able to punch him and beat him up. And then they're like, you sure you're not the superhero? I was like, no, I just took some classes. And of course, that's classic Mary Jane. And by the end, you know, Mary Jane worrying about Gwen not making the show was a big part of the whole entire issue of like, oh, well, I don't care that she's Spider-Woman and, you know, causing herself harm. I, I just care that she's not going to make the gig, she promised. And of course, she really does think that Gwen is Spider-Woman. And of course, she's right. But everyone else thinks she's crazy. But by the end... It's Gwen, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, it's MJ texting Gwen saying, uh, hey Blondie, keeping the stage warm for you. Come back in one piece, okay? So it's more about her worrying about Gwen, the superhero, than saying, oh my god, you're not our drummer. So, uh, really seeing some growth through Mary Jane. And that's important, because I really do think Mary Jane's gonna play a bigger part in Gwen's supporting cast as as we see her go down this downward spiral of becoming Gwenum. I really think this is just a setup of MJ really being that supportive friend and uh, being the supporting character we know her from for Peter, except now for Gwen. And I'm really excited for that. This is a really fun issue, you know? It brings back the fun of Spider-Gwen, and exactly what the Watcher says. Uh, you know, obviously we've been going to, towards a darker turn. We've been really dealing with the Matt Murdock story for a good n a number of issues, and having really gotten to see Mary Jane and Friends and really seeing the rocker aspects of this book. So it was nice to kind of see that back here. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It's all the things I like about Spider-Gwen, except I would like to see Gwen. But this is such a good intermission issue before we get into the Marvel Legacy uh, storyline for next month. So Spider-Gwen issue 23 for me gets four and a half stars. I had a blast with this one. 
If you're looking for a fun book to read this week, Spire Gwen is definitely that book. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also in the description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.